All right, folks, it's Nick from Riley Dividing the Word of Truth. Continuing in my series on the doctrine of the Trinity with a focus on the angel of the Lord. Last time we looked at Genesis chapter 16, verses 7 through 14. Today we're going to look at Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 19. Similar thing going on, but a little bit different. Go back and watch the last video. It's only a few minutes. Shouldn't take you long, especially if you put it on 1.5 or 2 times speed. In this one, we're going to look at a very famous passage. This is referred to as the Akedah, or the Binding of Isaac. Most of you are probably familiar with it, but many of you may not have noticed the things that we're going to point out in this video. And if you have, and if you have anything that you'd like to add on to it or share with me, please feel free to leave a comment. But without further ado, let's get into this. So, we're looking at Genesis 22, 1 through 19, and it starts off and it says, After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. So now notice, it's God testing Abraham. Very explicitly, God is the one testing Abraham. And he speaks to him and it says, Abraham, and Abraham responds saying, Here I am. And he said, Take your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, he saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. So again, God calls him, God tells him that he's to offer sacrifice. He's to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. God tells him the place where he's supposed to go. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and he saw the place from afar. Then Abraham said to the young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife, so they went both of them together. Again, I want to keep reiterating that this is sacrifice that's about to happen. They have the wood for the burnt offering. He has the knife in order to slaughter the sacrifice. And they're going up to the mountain to where God has called them. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, my father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So now Isaac is getting suspicious. He's saying, I, I see that we have all of the things for sacrifice, but where is the lamb to sacrifice? And Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. And when they came to the place which God had told him, Abraham built the altar and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. So again, he builds the altar. He has the wood. He has the knife in his hand. He's getting ready to slaughter his son and then burn him as a sacrifice to God. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. And he said, This is the angel of the Lord speaking, Do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. So the angel of the Lord says, You have not withheld your son from me. This is how I know that you fear God. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So again, all in the context of sacrifice. There's an altar, there's an offering, there's the wood to burn it. Everything that we need for real worship is taking place in this scene. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. So we know this as Jehovah Jireh or Yahweh Jireh. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven. So again, the angel of the Lord calls to Abraham from heaven. And he said, by myself. So the angel of the Lord is the speaker. And the angel of the Lord says, by myself I have sworn, declares the Lord. Now the angel of the Lord is being called the Lord. Because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and I will surely multiply your offspring as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. This is a callback to Genesis chapter 16 and verse 10, where the angel of the Lord says the same thing to Hagar. And then later in the narrative, we see that it is the Lord himself, it is God who fulfills the promise to multiply the offspring. 
And he says, And your offspring shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in your offspring shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. Again, this is the angel of the Lord still speaking. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they arose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham lived at Beersheba. Okay, so I've been pointing things out throughout our reading of the text, but there's several observations that we can make, seven in total, at least seven. There's, there's more, but for our purposes, seven things I want to point out. So observation number one, God tested Abraham by telling him to sacrifice Isaac. Sacrifice is a huge thing here because we only sacrifice to God and to God alone. So it's paramount that we understand who the angel of the Lord is. So God tests Abraham by telling him to sacrifice Isaac. Observation number two, Abraham said that God would provide the sacrifice. When Isaac looks around and he's like, look, I, I see the wood, I see the knife, we got something to make fire. Where's the lamb? What's going on, dad? What, what, what's happening here? Isaac's not, he's not a little kid at this point. He's old enough to know what's going on. And the sages and early church fathers alike, they, you know, they commend Isaac for his obedience and for his willingness to be sacrificed once he realizes what's going on. But Abraham said, nope, God is going to provide the sacrifice. God will provide for himself a lamb. So observation number three, the angel of the Lord says that he knows that Abraham fears God because he didn't withhold his son from him. So the angel of the Lord is saying, you didn't withhold your son from me, and this is how I know that you fear God. Why? Because the angel of the Lord is equated with God. And again, sacrifice is something that's offered to God and to God alone. This is true worship. And yet, the sacrifice was being offered to the angel of the Lord. So observation number four, the angel of the Lord speaks from heaven in verses 11 and 15. He does it twice. Now, why is this significant? Well, for one major reason. There are people who want to employ the concept of agency. They want to say that the angel of the Lord is just another agent. He could be like one of the prophets. He could be like uh, any of God's messengers. But here's the problem with that understanding and trying to use that as a defeater for what's going on with the angel of the Lord. And I'm going to make a whole separate video explaining in more depth what the problem with that is. But suffice it to say that the agent is sent forth to represent the one who sends him. In this passage, the angel's speaking from heaven. He hasn't been sent anywhere. The angel doesn't appear to Abraham, right? He's speaking from heaven. That's big. We just read the Annunciation this morning in church, and there the angel Gabriel shows up and speaks to Mary and tells her that she's going to be with child, even though she hasn't known a man, and that she'll call his name Jesus because he'll save his people from their sin. We have all of that, but Gabriel shows up. Gabriel was sent by God to deliver this message to the Virgin Mary. We don't have that in this passage. Here, the angel of the Lord speaks from heaven as God. Very important to note. Observation number five, the angel of the Lord provides the sacrifice. So who did Abraham say would provide the sacrifice? He said that God would provide the sacrifice. But the angel of the Lord is the one who provides the sacrifice. Observation number six, Isaac was going to be and the ram was sacrificed and offered to the angel of the Lord. So we already mentioned this, but just to reiterate, sacrifice is offered to God and God alone. Anything else is idolatry. Now, if you want to appeal to agency and say that an agent can receive sacrifice, an agent can receive worship on behalf of God, you're going to have to prove that. But here... Isaac was going to be offered to the angel of the Lord. The angel of the Lord stops him. The angel of the Lord provides the ram caught in the thicket. And then the ram is offered to the angel of the Lord. This is true sacrificial worship. And it's due to God and God alone. There's no workaround for that. No concept of agency is going to get you there. Final observation. The angel of the Lord swears by himself and calls himself the Lord. There's no higher name that God can swear by than his own. The author of Hebrews makes this plenty clear. So what's the conclusion that we draw from this? 
well, once again, the angel of the Lord is equated with God in this story. In some sense, it's even more explicit than it was in the Genesis 16 passage, because here the angel of the Lord is the recipient of sacrificial worship. Agency can't explain that, no matter how hard people want to try to make it work. It just doesn't. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. In the next one, we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. If I missed anything that you'd like to add, please feel free to leave a comment. If you disagree and want to tell me why, leave a comment for that as well. Give me a thumbs up, like the video, it helps out. Click on the bell for notifications for when the next one drops. And if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. If you are subscribed, I appreciate it very much. Share this with your friends and family. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video. God bless.